Okay, so other kinds of graphs. Other kinds of graphs. Okay, and I'll just whiz through some different kinds of graphs. Okay, so um, directed, weighted. Okay, so a weighted graph is very similar to a, a, a regular graph, except that, you know, we like to indicate the strengths of relationships. So, for example, if I have ISPs, you know, here's a bunch of ISPs, okay, and I have, you know, ISP connectivity, okay, I might, you know, list as the weight of this link, the strength of this link, or how long does it take a packet to traverse? And if we're talking about, let's say, milliseconds, maybe it takes, you know, you know uh, 10 to go this way and 2 here to traverse from here to here. Maybe from here to here, you can do it in 2 milliseconds, maybe 5, maybe 2. Okay. But for some reason, from here to here is 10, and from uh, here to here is, let's say, 3, and, you know, let's say 5, and let's say 8, and let's say 8. Okay. And you can think of this, these numbers that we attach to the, the links that indicate how long it takes, those are called weights. Okay. And we might be interested in how, what's the fastest way to send a packet from this guy to that guy. Okay. And you know, the shortest path is clearly 10, 8. So that's two links. So what's called a two hop path. And that takes 18 milliseconds. So two hop path equals 18 milliseconds. Is that, can we do better? Yeah, we can do much better. Look, if I go, if I take a much longer path, two, two, uh, five, two, that's 11 milliseconds. So there's a five, there's a four hop path that takes uh, 11 milliseconds. Okay. And you can think of uh, distances in a road network. And, and what Google does is it, is, is it tries to find paths between vertices of, of, shortest, of shortest length, okay. and so on and so forth. So this kind of a graph, with you know strength of relationship on each edge is called a weighted graph. Directed graphs. Okay, so directed graphs are you know very common as well. Directed graphs are used to indicate one-way relationships. So a road network with one-way roads or an ancestry network. So so for example, Malik, you know, Malik is the is the son of you know two parents. Let's call call the two parents H. And F, okay, and so H is a parent of Malik, and F is a parent of Malik, and that makes sense as a one-way relationship. And so we use an edge with an arrow to show the direction of the relationship. Malik, uh, H is the parent of Malik. Doesn't make sense to say that M is if you if you if you if you don't have that arrow, you might think that M is a parent of H. It's completely wrong. And then Malik has children, so Malik is the parent of some children, and you know, and and uh, Malik's parents had parents and Malik's, both of Malik's parents had parents. So you see, I'm constructing a graph okay, in which the edges have direction. Those are called directed graphs. Okay. You could think about the one-way flights between cities. So two, two cities are linked by a one-way flight. That's an edge. That's a relationship with a direction. So whenever the relationship is one way, we use what are called directed graphs. You can read about it in the text, internet, and, and what have you. Uh, Let's talk about multigraphs. So, so far we have said that, you know, you can only have, you know, one edge from one vertex to another vertex. You're either a friend of mine or you're not, okay, or you can make it a weighted edge. But what about multiple edges? So actually, the problem that got graph theory started in a serious way, and which was solved by Euler, is a problem having to do with multigraphs. So vertices can have multiple edges to, e to each other. So, so here, here's the scenario, okay? So there's a river. So I'm going to draw the river in blue. And this is the, a river through the city in which Euler, the great Euler lived. So there's a river. Okay, it comes into the city and it branches. Okay. And so there's an island in the middle. Okay. Okay, and then the river comes and goes off in two you know, different directions. So there's another sort of weird kind of island here. And so here you've got buildings and so on, buildings and you know what have you, blah blah blah, parks and so on. Okay, and this is a long time ago. Okay. And now, you know, from various points in this city to various other points, there are bridges. Okay, so there's a bridge uh, going like this. Okay, there's a bridge going like this. Okay. Um, there's a bridge going like this. 
There's a bridge going like this. There are two bridges. There's a bridge going like this. Um, so let's see. Uh, there are bridges going like this across the river and bridges going like this across the river. Okay, so you have sort of six bridges. And, you know, the, the mayor and all the, you know, big wigs in this uh, city. So this is a long time ago. There was no internet. There was no social media. Okay, so what did you do? You walked. You walked around. Okay, and so, you know, for some reason, the, the, like the, 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 the people in power in this uh, small city, okay, Konigsberg, okay, you know, wanted to know, is it possible for me to go on a walk and cross every bridge exactly once? So every bridge is crossed exactly once. No bridge is crossed zero times. No bridge is crossed more than once. Every bridge is crossed exactly once. For example, you start on this part of the city, you cross this bridge, then you cross this bridge, then you come back, cross this bridge, then you cross this bridge, then you cross this bridge, then you cross, you cross, bridge, then you cross that bridge. Okay. And so that was the question. And in this case, the answer is yes. Okay. Then another bridge pops up. Okay. And another bridge. Oh, now can we still do it? Because okay. we used to be able to cross every bridge just once, but now can we still do it? Okay. And this is called an Euler path. Okay. And um, where, so what, what, so the, you know, Euler is living there, they pose this question to the great Euler. Euler says, ah, I'm not interested in bridges and cities, but let me build a graph. So each region in my city is a graph, is, is a, so let me call these regions A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to call those the points of intersection in a road network. Okay, so you got A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now, what are my roads? My roads are the bridges. So I have edges, but I have two edges from A to B. So I'm going to represent that as two separate edges. And I have two edges from B to C. So I'm going to represent that as two separate edges. Now, from C to D and from A to D, I have an edge. Okay. And then I have a one final edge from B to D, the new bridge that we have. Okay. So we look at this and say, ah, is it possible now to start somewhere and follow a path that crosses every bridge exactly once. So let's try. You go here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, okay, maybe here, maybe here, but now I'm stuck here and I've already used all the edges. And so Euler proved, and he did this for a general graph. Okay, he proved when and when you cannot do that. Okay, when can you and when can you not do that? And he showed that on this graph, you cannot do it. And you can see the exercise in the book. So you cannot take a walk and traverse every edge exactly once. To take a walk means, you know, a path on the graph. You cannot find a path on the graph which crosses, which traverses, which uses every edge exactly once. And then this was became such a famous problem, the, the task of of taking a path on a graph and, and using every edge just once became known as an Euler path, and that's what it's known as today. <clears throat> okay. Euler answered this problem for general graphs, okay. and, he, and he outlined the conditions under which you can and, when you, and which you cannot. And you might try to think, you know, how, how do I know you cannot? There are lots of different paths. And how do I know none of them you know, crosses every edge exactly once? Try to prove it. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, I want to show you the most important application of graphs, which is to solve problems. Thank you.